So welcome, welcome to our parents. Um, we are so glad to have you with us. I, am, I have talked to these individuals and I know their stories and you're in for a treat. Um, we do want to kick this off, uh, first off, thanking R.S. Andrews. R.S. Andrews is an HVAC company here in Atlanta that does an incredible job supporting us at the Gailey Dose and you should check them out for any of your HVAC needs. Um, rsandrews.com and tell them that the Gailey Dose sent you. All right, so our first question to everyone is really to try to get an idea of your stories for, the, uh, for those that are out there. We're gonna start off with Amanda who transitioned her child at age six. So, um, gosh, my story is just that I have a, a child who's 13 and um, she's a beautiful little girl. She came out to me um, as feeling um, not her biological sex that she was born as when she was very, very young, uh, probably about three or four years old. And um, I, uh, at the time, my children were, were very involved in a specific church that we went to and um, I was very involved in the children's ministry and um, we talked about heaven often and um, my child started saying things to me like, you know, well, when God, um, when I die, I'm going to be, my, my soul is actually a, a girl and my body is going to become a girl's. And, um, and I was like, huh, okay, <laughs> whatever, you know, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I was like, good, great. Um, but I didn't really think too much about it. And then um, it started becoming more and more insistent. Around this time, she also started um, wearing her sister's clothes often and not wanting to ever take them off. Um, and getting more and more upset when we went to say, for instance, get her hair cut, things of that nature. Um, and so I just started really praying about this situation and being a, you know, a believer, um, that's what was kind of recommended to me. Um, all the counsel that I, that I saw, that's what everybody said. And so that was the first thing that I did. In my mind's eye, I kept seeing um, the story, I don't know if y'all are familiar with the Bible at all, but there's a story that this man Saul fell and heard the voice of God speaking to him, and nobody else who was around heard this voice, but when he heard it, he was blinded, and for three days he was blinded, and he had to go to this the house of this other man. It was kind of a convoluted story, but when the other person touched him, he suddenly could see. And I kept thinking and pondering about that. And I thought, you know, it's not everybody else who needs to change the way that they're thinking. It's me. I'm the one that needs to change yeah. the way I am seeing my child. And it was like, I mean. I, 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 it, light bulb, right? It, it really was a light bulb <laughs> yeah. moment for me. And and that's when I, fir when I said, when I started at least taking God out of the little box that I had got in and, and, and believing that God is so much bigger than I could ever even imagine and that perhaps this is exactly the way that God intended my child to be and that she was exactly as she was supposed to be created. And so um, I started doing a lot of research and that was really the first thing that I, one of the first things that I did, I started just reading everything I could get my hands on about the transgender community and and what um, the biblical translations and what all of this could possibly mean, trying to reconcile my faith with my child and, and how this can possibly be okay. And let me tell you that I finally got to the point where after seeing developmental pediatricians and the regular pediatrician and... Um, Th gender affirming therapist, gender non affirming therapist, um, reading everything that I could on both sides, I finally came to the conclusion that it was like, okay, well, I can either, I have, I have two choices. I can transition my child and allow her to live as she wants to live, or I can continue to fight this and not let her live the way that she wants to live, meanwhile, making herself and everybody around completely miserable. 
And it was, it was really at that point a no brainer. It was, it was just simply the, me wrapping my own mind around the fact that this is what God intended. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I tell you, I can relate to that from the perspective of having also had a strong Christian background coming to that just within myself, it, it took such a time. I can only imagine how hard that would be to channel that for your kid, but you came to that, that conclusion. Now tell me, what is the result of that? What do you see in her? Do you think you made the right decision? And how did you get the initial feedback to keep going? Well, let me tell you, the very first day that we did decide there was not going to be any more of her dead name, it was all Leah, we were fully in, um, from the very first day, she, she used to wet the bed every single night. The first She's cringing day, there, the first, I just want you to know your daughter, is she, prob she probably <laughs> is, but she should be very proud of herself because <laughs> that particular day that we transitioned her, she never wet the bed again. Like, <laughs> and it, I wish I'd done it sooner. I wish I'd done it sooner because it was, it, there's been more joy. There's nothing that you want more. Right. There's nothing in the whole wide universe that you could ever ask yeah. for. Now, I want to introduce Tim Johnson. So, yeah. Tim, I, you and I have known each other for Long years and years and years. And years. <laughs> I've known you, I know your family. You know, amazing to me to watch your entire family, you know, and what you guys went through. You, you know, I can't even imagine what it was like for you when your then son came to you in high school and said that he's a girl. <laughs> what was that like for you? Well, actually, it was a little bit after high school. Okay. And um, for me, it really wasn't difficult at all because um, throughout my entire life, I've always had people that I knew that were LGBTQ my whole life. So it wasn't anything new. I grew up in a pretty small town called Hobart, Virginia that um, for whatever reason, well, it was a one high school town. So all we needed to do was hate Petersburg. And so as long as you can help us hate Petersburg and keep them in football, <laughs> you're okay. And so I remember we had one guy on our team, his name was Kurt. And um, he was Dave, and he would, he was a linebacker, he would wear a wig under his helmet. Oh, okay. No Wait. one said anything. Mm -hmm. I, I knew a lady who was more, but no one said anything. No one cared about who you were other than you being in there and you were from Oakland. I don't know if that helped or not. And then my stepdad, he always said that as long as someone hadn't done anything to him, then they were all right with him. And so I always had that perspective. And also, me personally, I like information. And so I already knew that beyond your phenotype, there's a lot of things that human beings exist under a spectrum. So I know what Klein-Felter syndrome was. So it was nothing to me. I knew that 10% of all animals were gay. So when Mallory came out and told us, it was really a relief to me yeah. because all throughout her life, I noticed that something was amiss and I didn't mm -hmm. know what it was. And I felt less um, than a problem because I couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, but what she did tell me, then I put together a lot of the clues that I'd been missing for so long. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was happy to find out and to support it. How do you know it was a good decision? What was the feedback? And also, like, how did you approach, you know, the care process? Yeah, so I know it was a good decision because I see her smile <laughs> all the time. Um, <laughs> and, and that was something that was missing. Didn't always mm -hmm. smile. A lot of times would not. We'd go out and shop. We have two other kids. And Mallory wouldn't want to buy any clothes. And sometimes she would say, I don't need any clothes. I already have a pair of pants. Or, Dad, please don't cut my hair. And I didn't know what that meant. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and I was, it upset me that I used to do it and I didn't know. Yeah, now, but now you do. Now I do. You do. And so, even though a person likes information, I think if more parents had more information, yes. that they knew what it was, that they could recognize in their children, and, and Amanda, for you to recognize that so early and help her out is tremendous. They could recognize that in their children, and they could help them soon. Because as a parent, what you're supposed to do is take care of your child. Right. And um, if, if more people understood this was just a natural thing, then they would be more accepting mm -hmm. of it. They wouldn't let the world dictate to them how they treated their own child. Yeah. 
and then have that, even if they come to terms with it later, have that in their soul. That they um, didn't advocate for their kid beyond the world. So that's what you really have to do. So I, I know it was the right decision. That was a lot happier. I'm happier. Um, whole family's happier. It's great. I, I barely remember who she was before. So now. Our, our third parent for the evening is Claire here. She had the very hard task being called upon to represent in front of the government here in Georgia for SB 140 together with her son. And um, I thank you for your steadfast service um, because that kind of servant servanthood in our community is exactly the kind of living that we need to do. So I want to ask you in kind like the others, tell us a little bit about the story of coming to learn and understand uh, that your son was trans. Um, it's trans. It's trans, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it totally caught me off guard. I had no idea. And he transitioned in seventh grade, came home and told me that he had, his boyfriend had broken up with him by note. He tossed the note on my desk and mm. it was like, I knew it was, you know, that I was like, maybe it's Valentine's Day, you know, but, but yeah. I'm sorry, do you think we can still be friends? Because I know you're close, and he's like, "Yeah, but it was, it's going to be awkward, but we'll be friends." But um, we're, we're I I just need to um, I was going to break up with him anyways. <laughs> okay. Because I'm going through some really heavy stuff right now, and I was like, "What are you? Can you tell me what you're going through?" And he's like, "Yeah, sure. I'm going to go get a glass of milk. I'll be right back." And I was like, "Could you?" Give me a shot while you're <laughs> Oh my God. Um, and came back and said, Mom, I've been dropping clues. I missed them. I cut my hair really short. And I thought you might be the only girl with really short hair. I told you I don't want to have biological children. Well, so have my daughter. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, I was like, I my didn't want to have you until I was like mid 30. So I just, just you know, dispensed with that. I was like, are you gay? He's like, no, I'm overweight. Mm. And I was like, that's a whole different kind of sex. And I, and I was like, blah, blah, blah. I wish I could have pulled it back in and said, mom, it has nothing to do with that. Mm. I was like, I know, I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry. Um, I have trans friends. I'm a former journalist, I can ask questions. I can learn. I'm so glad you told me. I love you. You need to tell your dad. Said, I'm not ready to tell dad. So, like you have to because I have to have somebody to talk to about this. And so dad was on a trip and when he came back, he knew something was up because we were sitting there. <laughs> and uh, he said, what's up, who? And Sam said, dad, I'm trans. And he said, I love you fiercely. Mm. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I wish I'd said that. <laughs> Good job, Dad. But he wanted his child to know that he loved him no matter what. And we sort of led with that the whole way through. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about... Tell me a little about the journey in healthcare, right? Like, how did you steer forward from there? And then what's the net result? How is your son today? He's happy. He's in college um, at, in Washington State. It's, you know, you go through a lot of doctor's appointments. We went and saw a therapist because you want to make sure that there's not something else going on that makes you not want to be who you are. Mm -hmm. And I needed help understanding. Sam needed ways to talk to me about what was going on. And so the therapist was really good about helping us to have those conversations. And we saw doctors too, and um, it's not a quick process. And we decided to have Sam go on testosterone when he was about 13, I think, probably about a year afterwards. And he, um, at age 16, had top surgery. And I'm a breast cancer survivor, so I sort of think it's kind of prophylactic in a way. Um, and he is, so happy with how he looks. He's a good looking guy. I mean, yeah. yeah. He's a good looking guy. <laughs> My daughter, she actually came to me when she was 13. Um, and she told me she was a boy living in a girl's body. 
And she actually said, I think I'm trans, Mapa. My daughter called me Mapa. Mm -hmm. um, as a parent, I was shocked. Mm -hmm. Now, I wasn't as shocked as being the activist that I am. So I, I put her in touch with people I know. I mean, I'm lucky I'm a part of this community. I've been, you know, been an activist for you know, 30 or 40 years of my life. So I took her to somebody at, um, uh, at the Gay Center here, um, the Philip Rush Center, and I took her to, uh, to see James Sheffield, who had just finished transitioning. And, you know, I let her discuss it with him. You know, I had all the other signs of my daughter, so I didn't, per I, I personally didn't think that she was trans. I can't tell you now, my daughter is 18 years old, mm -hmm. and my daughter is completely gender fluid. I've been educated by my daughter on what she is, and she is gender fluid. I was talking to my daughter just yesterday, and she was saying that one of the things that we need most of all is education. Yes. And I could not agree more. Um, I think that the educational aspect of, and, and actually, the misinformation that is out there and the things that 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 are um, that that are made up that have nothing to do with the reality of the situation is what is so maddening, and also the stuff that um, that, that seems to keep circulating. I feel like the more that we keep talking about the facts, um, I'm hopeful that the more people will finally understand. We were hanging out. And I was a parent and I said, you know what? I agree with these bands. I think that um, kids, kids aren't ready for this kind of care and we just don't know enough. The science just isn't there enough. And you know, I, I just don't, I think that it's fine, right? What would you tell me to try to convince me perhaps that maybe I should rethink my perspective? I would say, um, well, that's very nice that you have that opinion. Um, uh, you would or that. The, right, right. No, not, I, I might not use those exact words. Um, but I would say um, that uh, would you feel the same way if your child were born without a limb? Would you say that um, a prosthetic or perhaps a wheelchair or maybe crutches should be illegal? because that is not the way that, um, that they should just learn how to deal with not walking <laughs> or not have an arm. I mean, what's, what would be the difference? So what if I'm a parent who is facing into the challenges of having a young child or having someone that's questioning, right? And I'm asking these questions and the laws are going the way they are and I'm afraid. How would you encourage me as a parent who's sitting here at the barbecue with you facing into this newly? I would just say to the trans parents, uh, parents of trans kids, and I know a huge community of them, and I actually have some friends who've already left the state because wow. of this mm -hmm. law. I would say stay because there's going to be an ACLU lawsuit that will hopefully stop it and extend the period. And, and find your community. If you don't have one already, transparentusa.org is an organization for mm -hmm. parents of transgender kids. And um, we, our providers, will help us find care for our kids. And I feel like we're going to be okay. That if it's much more accepted than Republicans make it out to be. <laughs> And, and if the world is going to be like my kid, we're going to be okay. Yeah. I'm sure you got it.